Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a part of the Lippert Technical Institute. Today I want to walk through how to operate, install, and set up your Furion Precision Battery Monitor. We're going to begin this by going over what's in the box for this setup. Here you can see the power monitor and this is the interface where you will communicate and get the information for your battery system. Next we have the installation support. This goes on the back of this plate. Next is the shunt. The shunt will go on the negative side on your battery power bank. Then we have our shielded wire that will connect our shunt to our power monitor. Along with the components that come within the box, you'll also receive the user manual and that will contain all the information for installation and how to operate your system. And you will also receive your warranty card. On your screen, you'll see the tools you need for this procedure. Here we are at our battery compartment and we have our tools and a few materials spaced out and ready to be installed. When you're choosing the place to install your shunt, make sure that you have calculated where you are also going to install that power monitor. That power monitor's shielded wire is only 32 feet long and it's not recommended that you cut into that wire to lengthen it. If your shunt did not come with that 18 or 22 gauge wire installed, you will need a two millimeter flathead screwdriver to loosen and tighten that compression screw and install that wire. Let's start by grabbing our shunt and installing it to the wall. And we've decided to place our shunt right here. This B is where the negative wire from the battery will be installed to our shunt. P negative is where the negative wire will connect to our trailer's wiring. This is the screw that is compressing the 18 gauge wire and connecting our shunt to our positive terminal. Make sure when you are mounting your shunt, you use two of the pre-drilled mounting holes to secure that shunt. And if you mount it as shown here, when you take these nuts off the top, this bolt can fall through to the bottom because it's not being secured in place any longer. Now we can cut our negative battery wire and prep the terminals to connect to the shunt. Next, we'll prep the ground wire going to the trailer's wiring. With both these ring terminals attached, we can now connect to our shunt. P negative is going to be where we attach the grounding wire going to the trailer's wiring. And again, making sure you hold on to the bottom of that bolt so it doesn't drop down. And B negative is where we'll connect the negative wire coming from our battery bank. Again, hold the bottom of that nut so it doesn't fall out as you're trying to attach your wires. And 
now with both of our neutral wires connected to our shunt, we can connect our power wire to our battery. For our battery, we have to use a half inch ring terminal. And with this wire that I prepped with the inline fuse that has that five amp fuse in it, I'm going to cut this down and attach it to our battery. Now, one important step for this installation is to make sure your wires are all secured properly. You can see here we have a bit of excess wire. We would go behind and add P-clamps or zip ties and secure these to the wall or the floor to make sure there's no movement with these wires. And you would do that at least every 18 inches. Next, we can attach our shielded wire to our battery shunt and begin running this wire to where we want the power monitor placed. We're going to use a half inch spade bit and drill from the top of our cabinet down into our battery compartment. Next, we're going to drill the hole for the power monitor. We have our hole saw here, and we're going to make our two and three eighths inch hole here. There's nothing behind this, and we're not going to hit any electrical wire, but make sure you move any of those out of your way before you start drilling into your panels. Also, you may have noticed that I put my glasses on when I was drilling that last hole. Make sure you wear your safety glasses, and if you have any long hair or beard that is up out of the way so it doesn't catch into any of your tools. To install the installation support to the power monitor, you tighten this lock nut down against the support the support will compress against the panel that is in between the power monitor and the support and hold it tightly in place. So we're going to install this on our cabinet now. Before we press it in place, make sure your power monitor is straight and in the position you want it. And just like with the other wires, we'll make sure that this wire is secured at least every 18 inches, either with a zip tie or a P-clamp. And now, with all of our components and wiring installed, we can reapply power to our unit by either plugging in shore power or turning on our disconnect switch. Now we're going to go through the steps to set up your Furion battery monitor. Before you begin calibrating this to your system, you'll want to make sure that your system is not charging or have any inputs of load. So you can see here that our battery is charging and we're going to shut off our shore power and disconnect any trailer or truck or tow vehicle that we have connected that could be charging our battery. You're going to want to dis charge your battery as much as possible, but not discharge it below 10.5 volts because that can damage your battery. Once you are ready to set your battery capacity for 0%, you'll press the percent button and the plus arrow to display that percent. Then press and hold the V down button for at least three seconds and that will set the battery monitor for 0% battery charge. Once you are ready to calibrate your system to your specific battery, you can enter your amp hours. For your batteries connected in series, you will add your amp hours together. For batteries connected in parallel, your amp hours will not change. The voltage of your system is what will change. For our system, we are looking for that amp hours. So you'll click this, 
center button, which is the AAH, and you're going to click that two times to display your amp hours, and then press and hold that button for three seconds. Now you can calibrate what your specific system has for amp hours. Our battery has a rating of 85 amp hours, so we're going to lower that to what our system is. Now to set that number, you'll press the set button again, and now our battery monitor is displaying how many amp hours we have left on our system. Now that we've calibrated our system, we're going to wait until our battery completely charges, and this may take over 24 hours for your battery to recharge. So now we can turn back on shore power or reconnect to our tow vehicle. With our monitor displaying that we are charging, we're going to wait for our amp hours or for that battery percentage to show that we're at 100% charge. And then we will set our 100% charge and calibrate it for our system as well. Now we can press this percent display for three seconds and that will set our monitor to 100% charge for our battery. With your battery monitor calibrated to your battery bank, you'll want to make sure to check that the numbers are correct periodically because your battery can discharge and change over the lifespan of the battery itself. And if you are replacing your battery, you'll want to do a recalibration procedure each time you get a new battery and it's installed. Also, these numbers will be saved in for the lifetime of the calibration process or until you go in and manually change these numbers. When you are trying to read your display, there's a few things that you're going to want to know, specifically the symbols that are displayed on the monitor. Here you can see the light on our power monitor is glowing on and off, and that means that our battery is in a state of charge. You can also confirm that your battery is receiving amperage by the little plus sign that's on the display. If you want to check the status, either the percentage or the amperage from your battery, you can cycle through these modes by pressing the buttons on the front. And here we just cycle through the percentage, the amperage, and the voltage of our battery. Now this backlight will change for a few different reasons. If it is glowing on and off, your battery is charging. If your battery is discharging, the backlight will stay on steadily. And if nothing is happening, so it's not discharging or charging at your battery, the backlight will be off. You do have an option to turn the backlight off and you'll press the volt button and the percentage button at the same time for three seconds, and this turns the backlight off. 